Osio Dohiju, hey, welcome back. So, uh, let's. What I have for you today is a tutorial on how to um, detect a face and then uh, send that data to a transparent image that you can use for a HUD or an HMD, that kind of thing. So, the Surrender Project is an HMD and personal assistant. It's an intelligent personal assistant, and I've been working on this for for many, many years. Um, I've been working on the thoughts and the designs for about 30 years, and I've been working on the different aspects of coding for the last 12, or 18 actually, and then um, and then the last four years, I've really been pushing with a lot of my development. And most of my development is in Python, and I am uh, with OpenCV and OpenGL and some others. but. In any case, uh, so the idea is that you can, you have a wearable device and as you're walking around you get the augmented reality plus you have the mixed reality, well really it's all mixed reality, but, and real briefly, virtual reality is where you put on the goggles, everybody's seen those, and everything you see and interact with is generated. Um, you have controllers that you can have in your hands and you interact with your world. Sometimes you can have gloves. Um, Ready Player One is an example of virtual reality. The whole thing is simulated. Uh, augmented reality is where you have something and you see the world and then based on cues or markers, uh, the, the, it is enhanced, it is augmented some way so when someone says markerless augmented reality what they're really saying is it's not a QR code looking marker it is um, it just means that if if I want something to happen when my when it recognizes my hand that's still a marker it recognizes those points as something it needs to deal with so in any case um, Mixed reality is where you see the normal world, you see the, the world the way it is, then those markered items still are augmented, but you can interact with it using your hands, speech, whatever. Um, so here real quick is, um, this is the, I'm waiting on my headset to arrive uh, that I picked out, um, but this is a hollow kit. Um, as you can see, so it has uh, it's made out of cardboard. Um, when you flip this up, it's got a screen inside. Um, here's the leap motion for um, detecting hand movements, uh, hand and arm. Here is the latte panda, which is powering everything. Um, you can see that the it goes into the screen. The screen has power. The leap motion is plugged in here. Um, the screen, which is here reflects off of a mirror that's on this back part and then it goes through a uh, magnifying lens that's here actually there's two of them uh, one for each eye in this case the viewfind has one and it goes all the way across then that gets sent uh, reflected off of this screen so it goes from here bounces off goes through a magnifier to this this mirror that's here and then you look through here and you can see um, you can see this the screen of my latte panda right now but if I look through here I can see through that into the real world so um, that is my current augmented reality setup uh, and what I can do is uh, I can interact with it with my hands I can um, I can I've created plugins that um, can then manipulate the images in some way and we're going to talk about one of those the simple item uh, the simple plugin that I created for this um, and this is uh, this code actually comes from someone else um, and it is what I started with uh, and I have I don't have it in front of me but I have the reference to who this code came from uh, basic idea is that it starts up a Flask server, which if you don't know, Flask is a, is a Python web server. Um, then it creates a camera object. Uh, the page then requests an image. 
the through Flask. Flask then takes that request. It uh, opens up the camera and then um, processes that image however I tell it to. In this case, we want to detect the frame. Everybody's going Vogue. We want to detect the face and the frame and then put a, a green square around it and send that back to the page. Uh, so let's show that real quick. Um, so uh, this is what it looks like. Um, as you can see, here's my face. Uh, here's all my collectibles over here. Um, and my face is outlined with a little green square. Now, if, uh, if I put up this image on my uh, head-mounted display, I'm going to see the camera view. I'm not going to see anything else but the camera. And then if it's dim enough, I can see through the camera. But that isn't ideal for a head-mounted display. You don't want to always be looking at the camera. Sure, if your head-mounted um, your head-mounted display or your helmet has cameras going off of you know all different angles or whatever, or you want to change, like maybe you have um, natural view and then an infrared view or something like that. You want to be able to change those. And sure, I could say, uh, Serena, show me the back camera. And then it would show me just a little view of the back camera, and then I could make it bigger or smaller based on you know whatever I tell it. However, if you're just looking ahead, I don't want I don't want to see this whole view here. I just want to see this square overlaid with my view. So let's change this real quick. Um, Uh, simplistic description of images are arrays of pixels. So every image has columns and rows of pixels. And um, in order to demonstrate what that looks like, it is going to be, uh, let's see, print type. So um, when I run this, it's going to print this out and it'll tell us what type it is and you'll be surprised what it is. So if you look here, it's a NumPy ND array. Now, that's what I basically just said, except that this is from the NumPy library, it is an ND array. So what we want to do is we need the image to come up and we need it to be the same size as the image we've drawn which is this size then we want but we want it to be transparent so we don't want it to have any data in it at all then we want to take the the, the face recognition square that it's drawn and put that on our transparent image so right now what happens is um, we load the the numerical representation of a face from the front. That's a simplistic way of describing it, but that's basically what it does. We capture the video, which is this camera that's on my computer. Um, and I'm not going to go into this, but I will in future episode, uh, future tutorials. But uh, there are many ways you can do this, including a Pi cam. Uh, I, I've hooked up to uh, eight cameras on one computer. Um, it will read in the video and give us back a frame and whether it was successful or not. Then with that frame, uh, in this case, we are resizing it. Uh, we are making it gray. So BGR, uh, just remember that OpenCV is not RGB. It is BGRA, not RGBA. So um, you'll need to remember that. The face rectangle, so it will take this cascade. It will detect how many faces there are in the image, and it'll give us back uh, the face rectangles. In that, we will loop through there, get the start X, the start Y, um, how wide and how high that is. So if the face is really long, it'll show that. If it's really wide, it'll show that, and it'll make it that size. And it'll continue to, to loop through there and find that. So for every frame, it runs this um, in real time. 
And then it will draw that rectangle, which takes the frame. That's what it's going to draw on. It takes the x, y coordinates to begin with. Then it starts with x plus the width, because you want it to be x plus however many over. And then it takes the y plus the height, and that's where it generates it from. This is, remember, this is uh, uh, BGR, so it's going to be green, 255. Then we're going to take that frame, we're going to encode it as a ping, we're going to return that, and then we're going to send that back to the page. Now, this was originally a JPEG uh, and not a ping, but I changed it and then I didn't change these. That's bad programming. Um, but that's what I did for this example because I wanted to get it done. Now, on the page, what you see here is the video feed. Um, this is the URL that it matches the root that is inside Flask. And then Flask will generate uh, the camera frame and then it tells it what camera it's going to do, which is, uh, which is right here, this video camera object. In this case, there's only one. I created a pool for Sorinda that um, has, you can, you can add as many cameras as you want to it and then it will uh, loop through those you know, you can tell it which one you want to call back or whatever. Anyway, so it'll send it back as a ping. If you wanted it to be a JPEG, you change this to JPG. Um, it'll send that frame back to the page, and then this will display that on the page, which is basically what we saw. So, in order to make this transparent, um, what we're going to have to do is import numpy as np um, so I just want to use this library then um, right here we'll go ahead and create um, we'll create a transparent image and we'll call it uh, transparent image then we want it to be zeroed because we remember we want it to be nothing we don't want it to be anything there and remember our array, our image, is 640 by 480 or whatever. Let's see what this says. It doesn't say, but it's going to be whatever size that we've, we've told it. So we'll just say uh, 640 by 480. So that means we want to create something that is 640 by 480 and it's empty. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to take the, uh, we're going to take the frame shape uh, 0 and the frame... And we're going to, um, this means that we're going to take the entire XY value, 640 by 480, and put it in here. And then D type, um, let's see, I want it to be uh, UNT, let's see, D, what is it, DT, or NP? NP, yeah. N, yeah, NP dot. Okay, so now we have a transparent image that we've created. Now, um, here though, so it's still going to detect the rectangles, and the reason it's done that is it takes the grayscale image and then it does the detection. Um, this is pretty standard in OpenCV. You make grayscale, you run the, 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 the filters that you want, and then when you're done, you just take those the data and then you apply it to your image, which is what we've done. It's my Wade Wilson mug. All right, so, um, so here, remember, uh, so here, let's do cv2 dot rectangle. Then we'll take our transparent image. Then we'll go ahead and x y. Uh, then we'll do x plus w and y plus h, same. Then we're going to do 0, 2, 55, 0, and we're going to do what here? 2, 55. Okay, and then we're going to do a 2. So what we've done here is, remember I said that uh, OpenCV is BGR. A, not RGBA, BGRA. So we have B, G, R, Alpha, A, 
and we want this to be transparent, so we're going to make it um, transparent, uh, and we're going to do what we need to with that. And we're taking the 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 draw part here. We're making putting a rectangle. We're putting that on our transparent image, so we don't need this right here. And um, because we don't want to, we don't want to send that back. And then here, uh, let's just go ahead and copy that, and I'll comment it out. And then we'll put a transparent image here because we want to return the transparent image. Um, so now, now we should have. Uh, this transparent image, uh, we've then written our green square to it, and we've instead, if we didn't have this 255 here, then the image would be, uh, well, here, let's just, let's just do this. I will show you what it does first. And then we're going to pass that image back. So let's go ahead and move this over there. Okay, so. So now you can see there is the square. So if uh, if I made this zero, and then we'll start this up. What do you think happens? Nothing. We don't get anything. Let's just put this back to two fifty five now. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what this means. So with the image, if I was returning just the image that was there before, then you would see that image here. Actually, let's go ahead and it's not going to cost, <coughs> excuse me, it's not going to cost much in processing power to go ahead and do this. So uh, we have the image here. now. In the background, let's go ahead and we'll put this div, and then we'll go ahead and style equals the background color, and then we'll just say black. Okay. Um, okay, and then we'll refresh the page. So it's in a black div here. Okay, now. Let's go ahead and stop this, and we will uncomment like so. Start this back up, and now, so you see, the image is transparent, and this is what shows that it's transparent. So when uh, when this is rendered in my HUD, uh, all I will see is that green square inside my work. I won't see all of the, I won't see the black, but, um, and that is exactly what I was looking to do. Uh, make the transparent image, that way um, my HUD will show only the parts of the processing that I want. And the idea being, if, give you a use case, uh, if I have this head mounted display on and um, as a simplistic example, I'm walking through my kitchen and I say, um, show me the chairs. I can, it will then recognize all of the chairs in the room and then put outlines around them. Or uh, if, uh, 
can't think of any other examples that would involve the house, but let's say you were using this in a car, and I don't advocate that. Um, if you're using this in a car and you're driving and you are looking straight ahead, and then it can, if it detects your gaze, then you can, it will know where, about where you're looking, and then it can look at that object, basically, and outline that object. Or if a car moves into your lane, it can highlight that that car that's moving towards your lane, and you're still seeing the real world, you're not seeing a generated one. Uh, and this is very useful for a head-mounted display and a HUD. Uh, it may not be useful for for someone who is doing uh, augmented reality just on their computer. Um, and obviously because we have just, we're not using the actual uh, video here, uh, and we're using a transparent one. If in the future we want to, um, we want to display this frame so that we can maybe adjust it, because maybe on my heads up display, the square is way over here on my left eye. Well, I mean, it would be stereoscopic, so it would be way over here, but really the object is to the right. And then we can use that image and then line it up with our view and, you know, make it, uh, you know, uh, bigger or smaller in the view screen so that you can see the image the exact way that it should be. And then when it recognizes something within your your limited view, then it will put that where it needs to go. Um, that's an, a different way of putting it all together. But also, so here's another use case. So um, I happen to, oh, here. Yeah, so uh, I have this head-mounted display and I'm like, I wonder how much this costs. And then I hold up a barcode and I should look at that barcode. It scans in the barcode and then it does a search somewhere on the internet and it comes back with that. Or let's say you want to see nutrition information, then you don't want to, you don't want to always see the, the barcode. You want the barcode to be surrounded by the green rectangle in real time so that you can see it that way and then it'll look it up. It's not that big of a deal to show the, the whole camera view as opposed to a transparent image. However, if you're standing in the aisle and you can't see anything else, then, and all you're seeing is this image of, you know, this camera view of your hand, then it doesn't do you much good. This is supposed to be unobtrusive for the most part in your life, other than having to wear something that uh, might look weird, uh, like, you know, the Hollow, HoloLens or, um, you know, any of the others that are out there. But anyway, so that is the tutorial. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Again, I'll leave the link to this, this code here uh, in the description below. Plus, if you want to see how I implemented the camera pools, which I am working on and I'm going to change, but if you want to see all of that, I'll leave the link to the Bitbucket code for the Surrender Project. And um, I guess until next time, uh, Dota go eat.